but I was always fishing somewhere illegally because I ain't own no lake or nothing. Hey, what are you doing over here? Get away, get out of here. I pulled my string up. Hey, them fish don't belong to you. Let them fish go. I got to take all them fish off the hook and throw it back in the water. He didn't know, man, that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to eat, but I can't break no law, so I got going by my business. Albert Einstein said that imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. That's what your imagination is. Your imagination is actually very, very real. Everything you imagine could be a preview to life's coming attraction. Everything we have today came from somebody's imagination. Somebody was talking on the phone with that cord on the wall and got sick of it and said, you know what, man, if I could just go outside and talk on the phone, ta-da, we got cell phones. <laughs> Somebody got tired of driving across the country and said, man, if I could fly over there, boom, we got airplanes. Imagination is everything. It's a preview to life's coming attractions. Everything you've ever imagined is real. See, I, I tell young people like this. First of all, this is how your imagination works. You gotta grab this concept. It is impossible for you to think an impossible thought. That is impossible. You can't think something that ain't possible. You ain't that smart. <laughs> so if it's in your head, you gotta ask yourself, how did it get there? That's God showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. The problem with most people is you think your imagination is hocus pocus. It's really not. It's a preview of a coming attraction. If you react to your imagination, that's where your real life is. It's just God showing you what he has for you. It's the problem people have is they tell their imagination to the wrong people. You know, my mama, once a month, would buy a travel magazine at the grocery store. My father used to be so pissed off. Bill, why are we spending this money? We ain't got, we were poor. She said, Slick, we ain't got no money to take this boy nowhere. But if he can look in these magazines, maybe one day, it'll, it'll, it'll cause him to want to travel. I've been to so many countries around the world because of that magazine. I just wanted to go see stuff. My mama had enough sense to plant that seed in me. It's like at Christmas time, we used to get in the car, my daddy used to take us to the suburbs so we could see the lights. And you know, we just drove around the lights. And I, could, I was amazed at the suburbs because I would see these big houses with horseshoe driveways where you drove in and came out the other side. I told my daddy one time, he was riding, I said, Daddy, why don't we get one of them houses? He said, boy, I ain't got no money for that, but that's what I'm bringing you out here for. She said, one day you'll be able to get one of them houses. When they was living, they told me one time, they was sitting up watching TV. My daddy looked at my mama and said, Bill, he called my mama Bill and said, can you believe that this little boy we had on TV? She said, Slick, I can't believe this. I used to send my daddy $5,000 a week. You know, when I first got on TV, I was making $55,000 a week, so I sent my mama them $5,000 a week. When I got into Kings of Comedy, my father was still living. I showed my daddy one time how much money I made. He said, boy, it take me four years to make this kind of money. So I was able to give them something with my life. I always wanted God to just lift me up so before my mom and them left this world, I could give them something. I bought them everything, man, houses, cars, furniture. I bought them everything I could think of. I tried. I'm 62 years old. I still want them. Be proud of me. I'm still hoping that they in heaven watching me and they see me to turn into something. That's all I ever wanted. It was in my imagination to take care of them. Everything that's in your imagination, God gonna make it come true for you. You just got to believe that. God make dreams come true. He take poor kids with speech impediments and put them all over TV. If God can do that for me, explain to me how he can't do it for you. You just got to believe, man. Don't ever give up and keep believing because God is real. Don't you listen to nobody telling you God ain't real. They the lost they ever loving mind. God is more real than anybody I know. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't even be here today. Talk 
to God often. Even if you're not perfect, just talk to him every day. You don't have to be in the same faith I'm in or you ain't got to call God the same thing I call him. But listen to me, you do have to call him, no. It's not going to make your life easy. I made a t-shirt one time that said, faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. All you want is the strength to get through your life. You know, I've been going through a lot lately. I'm telling you, man, your whole success is tied in your relationship to God. You can simplify this by getting in touch with your creator. If you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. I told everybody at 10 years old I was going to be on TV. I had a little problem when I said that. I had a severe stuttering problem. I could not talk outside of my house. I went to school, church, anywhere. I locked up. I couldn't go to the store. I, 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 I just stuttered profusely, man. It was a horrible experience. So when I wrote on that paper, the assignment was right on a piece of paper what you want to be when you grow up. I'm 10. I wrote, I want to be on TV. Teacher called me to the front of the class. I thought I'm going to get me a gold star because she had everybody stand and read their paper and their name. She called me to the front. I'm thinking, I'm going up here to get a gold star. I ain't never had one before. This must be, my answer must have been really good. I can't tell you how wrong I was. That lady didn't call me up there to give me no goals. She called me up there to humiliate me. And when I got up there, that lady lit into me. She said, why would you write something like this on your paper? First of all, why you call me up here? You know I can't talk. You already know I can't talk. And she just said, why would you write something like this on your paper? And I'm standing out. I'm trying to get it out. She said, who in this school ever been on TV? I, I, I. Who in your family ever been on TV? I, I. Who in this neighborhood ever been on TV? I, 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 I. She said, look at you standing there. You can't even talk. How they gonna put somebody like you on TV? So every Christmas, I send her a flat screen TV. I mean, look, the, the, the fears and doubts are a part of it. Can I be honest with you? Uh, Everything I've ever done started with a fear. My, my walking out on stage, that starts with the fear. When Oprah came and got me for this life class, I told her, I said, boy, this is like a stand-up appearance for me. I'm back there sweating. I don't want to talk to nobody. I, I have to overcome fear all the time. When I wrote my book, I was afraid. When they told me we wanted you to be a game show host, I've never done that. I was afraid. When they said, we want you to do a talk show, I was afraid. I have to overcome fear all the time. But the best way for me to overcome fear is the dream has to be bigger than the fear. That's the only way you turn around and run at it. I just want something so great. I aim for stuff so big that the dream is bigger than the fear. If you don't ever go for this, how, it, would it be better for you to face the fear or just deal with the fact that you just never gave it a shot? You know, if you don't surround yourself with other dreamers, here's what I know. If nine of your friends are broke, you're going to be the 10th one. That's, that's it. The first way to get focus is to find purpose. The way to find purpose is you must identify what it is that you have to be purposeful in. All you're trying to do is get to the goal. No one gets there by themselves. Everybody needs help. Now, when you know what you got going for you, be confident, not cocky. Managing your strengths, knowing what they are, and don't let nobody talk you out of it. And that gets you fight ready. You get fight ready like that. You got to know you. Helps you develop your skills. You just got to keep developing the strength. Don't let nobody talk you up. At the same time, you must work on improving your weaknesses. You got to get focused, man. You got to understand that this hard time that you're going through is prepare. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you, what you ask God for. Every trial and tribulation you go through prepares you for the life God has for you.